up guys i read something quite scary this week when it comes to the economy and coronavirus so listen to this we shouldn't be scared about people staying at home as the pandemic ends oh no 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 we should be worried about people taking to the streets Gosh, now let's have a little chat and see why. Hi, I'm Fifi, I'm engineer and consultant living in London and I make videos about saving money, investing and understanding the economy to make better financial decisions. The second wave of lockdowns have started and not as readily as people, myself included by the way, would have thought. At least from the research, it seemed like at the beginning people would be understanding for the need of lockdowns. But no three, that is not the case. Spain and Italy this week have had anti-lockdown protests, which may be a pretty early sign of the lockdown risk. Now, as indicated, I think we as a whole, and perhaps it may be a UK thing, that while we recognise the economic impact, we would as a whole accept a second lockdown for general public health, based on my readings. But that's just on our behaviour as law-abiding citizens, right? The political and economic impact will no doubt be huge, as will the impact on our investments, which is what we need to think about. So let's sprinkle the facts out there and see what the facts are actually saying. For the benefit of general public health, the majority of us overestimate the risk that this virus poses on health the adult. That being said, we do live in family units, so we understand that this virus is deadly for those that are vulnerable. So to protect those, we rightly overestimate the risk to ourselves because it's a collective risk. So a sum of parts where, yes, we may be fine personally, but we don't want our parents or grandparents to catch it from us, right? And that fear is real, guys, and with it, the onerous restrictions on everyday life make it impossible or very difficult to do activities that were once normal. So now perhaps we may feel safer once vaccines are rolled out and let's face it the first few iterations won't be as effective as for those that come out later. So the placebo effect of the vaccine may be enough for those healthy adults to come out and play. But we can't really be sure about that either. Of course we can't because if history is precedent then after the Spanish flu of 1918 to 1920 we had the roaring 20s. Great Gatsby anybody? So that's the bullish scenario and that's the kind of bullish scenarios for late 2021 and beyond. Wow, can you actually comprehend that it's been 100 years since that Spanish flu? Gosh, that's eerie. But that's the bull case. The bear case is that we are in a depression and not a recession. A recession leads to a permanent change in people's behavior and scars like this will take years to heal. And that very notion that everyone is aching to get back to normal and spend money, gamble, party wine and dine is not true actually let's sprinkle a few more facts so sister i could get a hold of some american statistics so 60 percent of americans are nervous about leaving home and won't actually leave until the virus is fully contained 33 percent are comfortable entering shop 22 percent are comfortable eating out and only 15 percent are actually willing to get on an airplane and then key findings by the bma so that's the british medical association in england indicated that more than 40 percent of people said that their levels of stress, anxiety, and even emotional, <clears throat> excuse me, distress had got worse since the pandemic began. Oh gosh. So the bear case itself does hinge on this and the failure to fix the vast economic and social damage done by authoritarian government politics. Now I graduated just a few years after the financial crisis and it was hard finding a job. I'm not going to lie guys. Oh my gosh. If you are graduating now, an entire generation of people now entering the workforce this year, last year and a few years to come will have have their prospects badly impacted. Likewise, it could be a boom for certain segments as economies and societies alter. I'm thinking perhaps those entering tech and healthcare type segments in the future. So these type of divisive prospects will be great for politicians. Rifts create nice stomping grounds for the populist movements after all. But with all this certainty, how do we investors hedge for long-term investing? Well, I did read something very interesting that I wanted to test you guys on and get your thoughts on. There's always an argument for owning the world, diversifying, etc. And yes, that's well and good. But if you did that for the last decade, then you would be 
a bit of a mug, right? Because the US is where the growth has been. You wanted to be invested in the US. Forget the rest is basically the saying and the mantra. But will that be the case going forward though? And if not, then how about having a GDP weighted portfolio? So GDP is the output of country or region. So by having your investments in the highest GDP countries would mean that you are somewhat protected by having your eggs spread through the largest economies in the world, which will mean that the US would make about 15% of your own the world portfolio. Or perhaps we might take a directional approach looking at how economies are growing and make predictions. Perhaps in this instance, you devote more assets to Asia because they are at the moment coping far better with the virus. So it's an interesting conversation and I'm keen to get your thoughts on it down there below. Give me a shout. Also, so for having good debates, we need good information and I'm here to give it to you guys. Here's a link to a few videos on the economy and the shapings of the virus and how maybe we should think about investing here and enjoy. Go grab another coffee. But until next time, I'm out guys.